The development of visual arts. Let's start with the development of painting. Prehistoric painting around 40,000 BC to 9,000 BC, animal spear and other rudimentary materials were utilized to produce prehistoric paintings. This work of art were drawn on caves, stones, and on earth-filled ground. The drawings or illustrations dealt heavily with hunting and employed stylistic treatment. Now, let us have the prehistoric Greek painting. Prehistoric Greek art was seen in four periods. The first one is the formative or pre-Greek period. Here, motif was sea and nature. The second one is the first Greek period, which is largely of Egyptian influence. The third one is the Golden Age, period in which the aesthetic ideal is based on the representation of human characters as an expression of a divine system. And the last one is the Hellenistic period which discussed heightened individualism and featured tragic mood and contorted faces. The subject matters of painting in prehistoric Greece were young white males, draped female, wounded soldiers, and scenes from everyday life. Now, let us have the prehistoric Roman painting. Prehistoric Roman art encompassed two periods. The first one is the Etruscan period where the subject matters of paintings were ancestor worship, catacombs, and sarcophage. The second one is the Roman period which is characterized by commemorative statues, sarcophage, frescoes, and designed with vine motifs. Art in these periods served the cult of ancestors and defied emperors. Painting in the medieval period There were three art classifications during the medieval period. The first one is the early Christian art. Subject matters of art in this period were symbols, cross, fish, lamp, alpha and omega, triumphal wreaths, grapes, Dubs and peacocks, hallowed Christ, saints, and martyrs, and the Virgin Mary began to appear in painting at the later time. A spiritual expression took precedence over physical beauty. The second one is the Byzantine art or the Byzantine art. The subject matters of paintings were Christ as the creator and Mary, the mother of God. The third one is the Gothic art. Gothic paintings were religious, grotesque, and calmer and plastic in style. The picture of the Madonna and Child of Franco-Flemish school gazing into each other's eyes in playful mood is an example of this style. Painting in the Renaissance the Renaissance is divided into three periods. The first one is the Early Renaissance. Early Renaissance paintings placed emphasis on simplicity, gesture, and expression. Painting depicted man and nature in fresco technique. The second one is the High Renaissance. Its center was in Florence, Venice, and Rome. Painting style consists of the deepening of pictorial space, making the sky more dramatic with dark clouds and flashes of light. An example of this is Andrea del Perucchio's Baptism of Christ. The last one is Mannerism period. The human figure is rendered through the use of oil paints of sumptuous, warm, and sensual colors. Famous painters in this period were Giotto, Leonardo da Vinci, Raffaello Sancho, and Michelangelo. An example work of art is The Creation of Adam 
by Michael Angelo. Painting in the Baroque Period Paintings in the Baroque period are ornate and fantastic. They appeal to the emotion, are sensual, and highly decorative. They make use of light and shadow to produce dramatic effects. The paintings show figures in diagonal, twist, and zigzags. Famous painters in this period include Peter Paul Rubens, Rembrandt, El Greco, Jacob Velasquez, and Bartolome Esteban Murillo. An example work of art is The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicolet Top by Rembrandt. Rococo Painting Rococo Painting placed emphasis, voluptuousness, and picturesque and intimate presentation of form and country. The Rococo art technique made use of soft pastel colors, rendering the landscape smoking and hazy with the subject always in the center of the canvas. Famous Rococo painters were Jean Anton Watu, Jean Honor Fragunard, William Hogarth, Joshua Reynolds, and Francis Boucher. An example Rococo painting is the Embarcation for Citera by the French painter Jean Anton Watu. Romantic painting. Romantic paintings delved on the artist's reaction to past events, landscapes, and people. Painting is richer than Rococo. An example is Manuel Osorio Manrique de Zuniga by the Spanish artist Francisco Goya. 19th century painting or the modern art. The 19th century art was aimed to please the public. The following movements appeared. The first one is Impressionism. Paul Cézanne was the greatest impressionist and the father of modern art. His efforts were toward the achievement of simplicity, brilliance, perfect balance, brightness of color, and sense of depth in art. An example is the still life with peppermint bottle by Paul Cézanne. The second one is Expressionism. Vincent van Gogh is regarded as the father of Expressionism. He used bright, pure colors mixed on the palette but applied to the canvas in small dots or strokes, relying on the beholder's eyes to see them together. An example is The Tahiti Woman by Paul Gaguin and Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Now, let us have the development of sculpture. A sculpture is an art form which employs modeling. Modeling refers to the technique by which a material is shaped and formed into a single mass or a block of material having tri-dimensional form. Prehistoric Sculpture Prehistoric sculpture consisted of rude forms carved in stones and woods. These figures and images were created to commemorate heroes and heroines and perpetuate the memory of men. Let us have first this Egyptian sculpture. Prehistoric Egyptian sculpture had gone through four periods. The first one is the First Dynasty period this period occurred 5,000 years ago. The sun, moon, stars, and sacred animals were common subjects of sculpture in this period. The next one is the Old Kingdom period. Portrait sculpture was emphasized. Five lifelike structures existed in every home. Its statues were either single figures or in family groups. The third one is Middle Kingdom. 
Faces of statues made during this period depicted individual moods but their bodies were still rigid and straight in posture. And the last one is the New Kingdom period. Figures of this period were lifelike and vigorous looking. They were depicted in usual poses like walking, dancing, and bending. Figures showed dignity and serenity. An example of prehistoric Egyptian sculpture is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Greek Sculpture Prehistoric Greek sculpture had gone through three periods. The first one is the Daedalic period, where marble was heavily used as material. Nude male statues were usually produced. The second one is the Classical Age. This was the Golden Age or Age of Pericles in Greece. Temples of gods and goddesses were adorned with sculptured figures. Many statues depicted young victors of Greek games and athletic contests. The human body with all its beauty and splendor was the emphasis of art in this period. Male figures were always naked, women figures were fully draped. Later Greek period Male and female figures were shown with very little or no clothing at all. An example of prehistoric Greek sculpture is the famous Venus de Milo. Venus de Milo by Alexandros of Antioch. Roman sculpture. Prehistoric Roman sculpture portrayed famous men and women in bust form. The personalities were represented as if in real life, including their individual imperfections. An example is Augustus of Prima Porta, early 1st century. The next one is the Byzantine or Byzantine sculpture. Byzantine sculpture is classified into two. Early Byzantine sculpture during this period, no statues can be seen in churches and basilicas, only symbols or signs as mosaic. For example, fish symbolized Christ. Hand protruding from the clouds symbolized God. And the next one is the later Byzantine sculpture. Statues replaced mosaic symbols and signs. Biblical statues adorned churches, basilicas, and even homes. These statues are tall, dignified, straight, exquisitely curved, sometimes covered with jewels. The Romanesque Sculpture Romanist sculpture gave prominence to biblical characters and human figures as subject. Biblical characters and human figures were carved in statues or in reliefs, with the bodies fully clothed, flat and elongated, and the faces grave and remote. Draperies were usually swirled in whirlpool patterns around these figures. Arcs of churches were decorated with zigzag and geometric design. An example is the Portico the Glorious Santiago Cathedral, where the coloring once common, too much Romanesque sculpture has been preserved. The Gothic Sculpture Gothic statues of human figures were given a natural and lifelike look, both in bodies and facial expressions. They wore garments to give the impression of real bodies. An example is this an unknown emperor, Charles the Great maybe, and Saint Denis of Paris between two angels. Renaissance sculpture. Renaissance sculpture is divided into three periods. 
early Renaissance sculpture, great and detailed attention was given to the anatomical shapes, proportions, and perspectives to indicate a more scientific attitude towards art. The second one is the Middle Renaissance sculpture. By the end of the 15th century, a sculpture became more secular than religious. Palaces were adorned with sculpture cast in bronze. And the last one is the later part of the Renaissance. The subject matters of sculpture were legends and myths of Greece and Rome. The artists were given complete freedom on their choice of subject. An example is Michelangelo's David. Baroque Sculpture Baroque sculpture started in 17th century. It depicted the beauty of art and stressed on the expression of emotion. The works of Gian Lorenzo Bermini and La Piedad of Gregorio Fernandez, a famous Spanish sculpture, were representative of Baroque sculpture. This is La Piedad by Gregorio Fernandez. Rococo sculpture. Rococo sculpture being highly ornate and exquisite, designed purely for ornamental purposes. This art appeared largely in furniture, panels, Bases and orbs. Rococo sculpture was first used in the court of the French King Louis XV. An example of this is Apollo with the medallion of Emperor Joseph II by Jacob Gabriel Muller. The 19th century sculpture. There were two schools in this period, the Neoclassicism and Romantic Realism. Neoclassical schools depicted perfect human anatomy, endowed with a calm, reflective look. And the romantic ro realistic schools depicted realistic figures with psychological attitudes of the French Revolution. A prominent sculpture in the 19th century was Auguste Rodin. An example work of art is The Tinker by Auguste Rodin. 20th Century Sculpture 20th Century Sculpture was mainly concerned with the human body. Pablo Picasso, the father of abstract sculpture, and Julio Gonzalez advocated a regeneration of plastic shapes through geometric organization of the human body. An example is this Monsieur Cactus by Julio Gonzalez. Henry Moore and his associates depicted anxiety and terror in their sculpture. Through this form, the sculpture's view of life is shown. And this is the nuclear energy by Henry Moore. Alberto Giacometti carved a figure endowed with either action or feeling by using tint out matter rising upward in empty space, the expression of being lost in finite nothingness. This is Man Pointing by Alberto Giacometti. In 1910, a sculpture geometric shapes emerged. This led to a new tool in sculpture the blowtorch. Through the presentation of marred and tangled shape, contemporary sculpture showed fear and terror. And this is the reference.